Hey guys, what's up? It is Public back with another video, this time coming to you from the Shadowlands beta. Uh, I have extensively tested all four covenants and their abilities and their interactions with each other. So in this video, we're going to go over each one of those actual signature abilities and the covenant specific abilities for Shadow Priest and let you know how everything's looking. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we're going to look at the Necrolord Covenant. So this is um, the one from the Maldraxxus zone inside of Shadowlands. So with this guy, we get uh, the class ability Unholy Nova. This is kind of just an AoE pulse ability that puts a dot on targets that it hits. And then the Covenant signature ability that we get is called Fleshcraft. This is a shield that we get to put on ourselves that gets bigger if we absorb enemies that have died. So um, first things first, this is probably the uh, most boring ability that we have right now. It's kind of a, not necessarily a set it and forget it type thing, but you, you know, there's not a whole lot of interaction here in terms of, you know, your rotation or anything you're doing in terms of like a shadow priest here. Um, you just kind of press it on cooldown when you're near mobs. Um, it does have a decent sized AOE. It feels very similar to like if you've ever used Holy Nova or something like that. It's pretty similar. You will have to go into slightly more melee range than you would have otherwise if you're say in a mythic plus environment or whatever. You're going to be a little bit closer to the pack than you would just to make sure it hits everything. But otherwise, you know, it's fine. So um, the only real note that I have about this ability that's kind of weird is, or not weird, but bad in my opinion, is that it does pull things that you are not in combat with. Um, this is kind of, uh, I guess this is a good thing if you're like leveling or you just want to pull things quickly, but if you're thinking about this in like a PvE scenario, right, if you have to run into melee into a pack but something's been CC'd or polymorphed, whatever, you know, this will break that immediately, right? Um, so the fact that it damages things that you know, you aren't currently in combat with can be considered a negative in that light. Um, it's kind of like, you know, you would randomly pull things with Halo back when we had that as Shadow. Uh, the difference here is, though, is since it's an instant cast, there's no way to, like, pre-plan it. Um, Halo does have kind of, like, a tracker of, like, where it's going to hit, where that radius is, so you can plan that while you're pressing the ability. Since it's an instant cast, we don't have that, so it's quite easy to pull things you probably didn't mean to, especially in a dungeon setting, so... That's really my biggest negative with this ability, other than it's just kind of boring. Um, and then as far as the Covenant ability, the Fleshcraft that we have, it's it's a shield. It's pretty good. Um, you do have to channel to bring the shield up to its full potency. Right now, if I'm channeling on Alpha without um, any enemies around me, it's doing about... So I have like roughly 20,000 health. The shield is for about 4,000. So it's a pretty solid shield. It's pretty good. Um, and there are a lot of actually Soulbind abilities that buff the value of the shield, whether making it uh, absorb more things or even make you immune to certain crowd control effects. So um, it can be buffed pretty pretty well. I think the this Fleshcraft ability is actually one of the better ones that we have from a Covenant. Um, it, it is a channel that's kind of annoying, but otherwise I think it's actually in a pretty good shape. So yeah, I wish Unholy Nova was a bit you know more exciting, more fun to play with, uh, but that's what we have. Uh, my biggest thing with this is I hope they do something with the out of combat mob thing, whether that's Give it a cast time to make it actually see where it's going to hit targets or do something about it, you know, just not hitting things you're not in combat with. Either one I think would be good, but let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, the next covenant we're going to take a look at is from Venthyr. So this is the vampire-esque covenant. Um, with this, we get a class ability called Mind Games. Mind Games so far uh, looks to be one of the better ones of the four that we have, although, again, not terribly exciting. So it's got a 1.5 second cast, 45 second cooldown. Um, it does initial damage to the target that you cast it on, just a single target cast, and then has this weird interaction with basically reversing whatever they do next. So if they are going to damage you with something, then that instead heals you or heals their target. And if they're going to heal something, it then damages them instead. So it has that brief like flip of what's happening. Um, it's not a whole lot of damage. Um, it's only a couple thousand based on my testing, but it's something. Uh, the reversal is more just a nice to have. Although for Shadow Priest, they added a bit more of a twist in that if that full reversal happens, meaning, you know, if they do that full amount of, I guess, like an absorb to you, instead heal you with that, you gain insanity back for doing, for that shield breaking. Um, so this does have some sort of a DPS benefit for them actually breaking that shield. Although this is the kind of core problem with the spell is that that's kind of hard to do um, given specific scenarios. So, for example, if you cast on a mob that's far away from you, the debuff only lasts a few short seconds. So by the time that mob walks to you, the debuff has already expired, meaning you don't get the insanity. You still get that damage up front from it, but no insanity gain, meaning you spent time casting an ability not to give you insanity, which can be kind of a problem in void form, just inhibiting how far you can make it stack wise. Um, also with things like, you know, 
intermission phases or vulnerability phases where bosses aren't attacking, say Mythic Nazoth, for example, or just Nazoth, where he goes into that vulnerable state, um, he's not attacking anything. So if you used it on that target, you know, you're never going to get the insanity back. It's just that initial dot or the initial damage, excuse me. So I don't, that interaction is going to be kind of weird. Um, I mean, you can save it for when that's not going to happen, but tank damage is kind of all over the place. So in a rating environment, the insanity generation is not going to be very consistent. So I would like for them to either make the insanity generation maybe, maybe get low, like not as much insanity, but the, you know, absorb still happens. Like getting that insanity right on cast would be amazing. That'd be the best thing they can do this ability. Um, Another thing that would be kind of a quick kind of quote unquote, fix for this is make the debuff last longer or maybe make the absorb shield um, uh, like the insane you get from that absorb shield, you know, maybe sooner than we, you would normally. There are a few things they could do, but right now it feels a little clunky to use if you're not getting that insanity back. So hopefully they do something to fix that. And the Covenant signature ability that we get from Venthyr is called Door of Shadows. I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about this ability. Everyone's been kind of talking about this Venthyr blink, Venthyr teleport, whatever you want to call it. So it is a castable blink, more or less, or a castable teleport. Uh, it's got a pretty sizable range, and it doesn't quite uh, have the same pitfalls as a blink or heroic leap does in that there's kind of a... You don't have the no path available problem nearly as much. You can seemingly get to places that you feel like you probably shouldn't, but you can. Um, this is actually a really nice ability from a priest perspective since we don't have you know a lot of burst movement. You know, we, we do have body and soul for talented into that, but this does give us something else to teleport somewhere a bit more quickly. Um, it does have a cast time on that teleport, but there are soul binds in the game currently that make this instant cast with a reduced cool, with an increased cooldown. So there are some options to make it more um, uh, easy to use for us. I have a feeling this is going to come in a lot of handy in a raiding environment. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of situations where we can plan ourselves in turret a bit longer than we would have otherwise, and then vent your teleport away to save DPS as much as possible. Um, a lot of great use cases for this. Um, probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, um, signature ability from a Covenant. So right now, Venthyr is looking really strong as a candidate to uh, be my first choice for a Covenant, but we'll see what changes they make. Okay, next up we have the Kyrian Covenant. Um, this guy is kind of the, the Bastion Zone Covenant. Uh, it, it gives us a few interesting abilities. I think overall this is my least favorite Covenant choice right now, but let's get into why. So the class ability we get here is called Boon of the Ascended. Uh, this is a, a somewhat complex ability. So basically you have to cast to get into this ascended form, and then you get, you get access to two abilities. One of them replaces Mind Flay uh, as just a blast ability that you can use, I think it's like every, basically every four seconds or so. And then you get a spammable ability that replaces that Covenant ability that you used previously. And you can just spam these abilities. And each one of these guys that you cast increases your stacks. And effectively, at the end of this buff active, when you're in this form, you explode based on how many stacks you got. Um, so you effectively want to use this ability and then kind of spam it as much as possible and alternate between the two as they come off cooldown and then explode, right? That's that's basically how it works. Um, I know it's, it is a little bit complex. It, it is kind of weird. Um, it has a lot of problems um, that I, just in my quick testing here. So n number one, the ability that you spam actually has a pretty short range. So you have to be right against the mob that you want to use this on. Uh, otherwise, you know, the range is much, much smaller than, say, Unholy Nova is. So you have to be kind of, you know, right in the thick of things with the mob to get this effect on them, do damage on them. And the other big problem with this is it doesn't give insanity. So you're going to be spamming a button that doesn't give insanity for a considerable amount of time. You're almost definitely going to drop out of Void Form during this time. There's no way that you keep yourself up with this. Um, they did make a change making the one that replaces Mind Flay give insanity, but... That's just not enough. Um, they replaced our filler spell. It just makes the rotation feel weird at that point. You're effectively pausing void form or pausing everything about your shadow rotation to handle this boon of the ascended buff. And that just causes some weird interaction with things and makes it honestly like feel like you're exiting void form every time you use this. So uh, pretty clunky, not my favorite. Um, if they wanted to fix this, they for starters have to make both abilities grant you insanity just to maintain your void form. Um, the fact that you drop out during this just makes it unusable, in my opinion, for most types of content. And then the other thing, too, because that first thing that you're spamming doesn't AoE, you will have to be in melee for this. 
Not my favorite thing. Wish the range was a bit larger. However, the explosion at the end of it does deal a lot of damage, so there is that kind of benefit there. As far as like a hard-hitting ability, this is one of the hardest if you get enough stacks to do that explosion. So it can do damage, but at the sacrifice of Void Form, I don't think that's very worth it. So um, yeah, kind of a weird spot with this guy, but it is what it is. And the Covenant ability, the signature ability that we get here is called Summon Steward. Um, this is kind of... I guess I would say the most boring Covenant standard ability that we get with this Covenant. Um, it just basically summons a guy that can, say, change our talents for us or uh, give a thumbs up to a party member, just kind of cosmetic stuff like that. The actual benefit here is it gives you a file, which is basically a free health pot with three charges. Um, it also cleanses, like, magic, disease, poison, bleeds, all that kind of stuff as well. So it can actually provide a reasonable amount of utility. Um especially if you consider you can use this and a health pot or whatever. Um, but we'll have to test that out once I get into a dungeon with a warlock to see if you can use it with a health stone and other things. But right now you do have that kind of permanent health stone basically active all the time, which is neat. Although we do have a lot of self-healing as a Shadow Priest, or at least a reasonable amount, so it's not super worth it. Uh, but you could just macro it to Shadow or Death, and that way you heal yourself up after uh, casting Death. So there's that. Um, but yeah, again, pretty boring. The fact that it does clear out bleeds and there's even some soul binds or conduits to make it make you immune from those effects can actually be pretty strong. I could see that working in well in like a dungeon environment. Um, there are a lot of dungeons, say in BFA, that this would have been great to be able to immune stuff for. Um, effectively having a, like a mini immunity as a shadow priest would be sweet. But, you know, I'm not sure if it makes up for the fact that Boon of the Ascended is pretty weak in my opinion. So we'll see what happens. Okay, guys, I've saved the uh, quote-unquote best for last here. This is the Night Fae Covenant that we have left. Uh, if anything, Blizzard needs to fix this as soon as possible. Uh, this has a pretty large potential to cause some pretty big problems, not only for Shadow Priest, but for the game in general. So this is one of the two abilities they added into the game that mess with cooldown reduction. Paladin's got one as well. Theirs has since been tweaked, but ours still remains. So as a Shadow Priest, when you use this ability, your next 10 spells do something different. And specifically, it augments Power Word Shield, Shadow Man, and Void Bolt for Shadow Priest. So if you cast Power Word Shield as one of these 10 spells, you invigorate your current target with 2% mana or 20% of a resource. This does work on yourself with Insanity, so keep that in mind. Shadow Man reduces an ally's damage taken by 10% for 15 seconds. Fine, whatever. And then the big one here is Void Bolt, reduces the cooldown up to 5 allies' major abilities by 3 seconds. This works very similar to how Vision of Perfection works inside of BFA, where it procs that kind of major ability. Now you're actually reducing the cooldown of that major ability. So for Shadow Priest, that's Shadow Fiend or Mindbender. You know, for Fire Mage, that's Combustion, uh, and kind of go down the list there. Every class or spec would benefit from this in some way or form. So basically we have, given this one and a half minute cooldown, we can reduce cooldowns for us and four other people that are standing next to us or around us. We're not quite sure yet. Need to get a raid first to test this. But effectively, this means that, you know, we can be uh, a support role inside the game. Um, safe to say this is pretty dangerous. If you stack Shadow Priest, you can effectively, you know, give, you know, Death Knights a very large breadth of Syndragosa, for example, or make that active for a long time, or Fire Mage having a much higher Combust uptime, whatever it is, right? There's a huge potential to kind of game break some stuff um, and basically whole hog your damage into the cooldowns of other classes and specs. I think it's a neat idea from like a healer perspective because you're benefiting the raid with casting other abilities. But for Shadow, this kind of puts us in a weird spot where we might be tempted to or actually lean towards, hey, please go Necro or sorry, go Night Fae for the raid because we need this cooldown reduction, right? To be able to progress this boss faster or whatever it may be, right? So not quite sure what that's going to look like yet, but it's definitely leaning towards that direction. And the other major problem with this, or I guess a uh, new thing that we've discovered, because of this ability reducing Mindbender, if you pair this up with a legendary that we went over, uh, there's a legendary that reduces the cooldown of Mindbender and Shadowfiend baseline. If you pair that together, you can get near 80% uptime of Mindbender just by yourself using this ability. Um, and that's without everything fully working yet on Alpha. I'm pretty positive that with, you know, all of our spells working at a higher eye level of ranks of our conduits and stuff like that, you can make a pretty monster combination of getting near full uptime of Mindbender or even having multiple Mindbenders active at once uh, with enough tuning and stuff like that. Um, 
Safe to say it's kind of weird. Um, if you've seen footage in the background now of myself and another Shadow Priest Ellipsis testing this out, um, this does stack, right? So if you have multiple Shadow Priests, you're reducing cooldowns even faster. And we're easily able to get multiple Mindbenders up at a time, doing three, four Mindbenders in a single Void form cycle. So it, it, it's, it's very dangerous, I think, of what this is going to be. If we can do this in starter gear with starter Covenant abilities and starter Conduits that haven't scaled quite yet, this can get pretty scary. This combination of things can get kind of out of control. So, um, honestly, I'm a little terrified that this would make it into the game live. I hope it doesn't. Um, at this point, if it does, we will be very, very tempted to go to this ability, even though it is super single target focused, right? Like, Mindbender isn't AoEing. Um, nothing here gives an AoE benefit here, but the, the single target potential is going to be, frankly, through the roof with this. Um, having that large uptime of Mindbender... And not to mention the, you know, secondary value we get by helping out other members in our group's cooldowns, um, which, you know, could mean they get an extra combust within a boss fight or maybe even two extra combust in a boss fight. Uh, who knows? Uh, it's safe to say I'm, I'm pretty scared this makes it live. So hopefully we get this either changed or removed or something because, frankly, I'm a little scared. So, And uh, just real quickly, they do have a, their Covenant signature ability as well. is called Soul Shape. This is a movement ability similar to uh, how we can use the Venthyr one. Um, it's not quite a teleport like the Venthyr one, but it is effectively, uh, you get a few mini blinks and then some move speed increases. Uh, in terms of mobility, this is probably the best covenant to pick. Uh, it's, it's up quite often, you can use it a lot, and being able to get these mini blinks is pretty nice. Um, you can cast some things while you're in this as well, you just got to be careful what you're doing. So, all in all, this is a pretty... Uh, terrifying covenant to say the least so I, I would be very surprised if this goes live like this I would expect some pretty big changes coming soon but we'll see what happens uh, in the next video we're gonna go over conduits so you'll see some things change here and I'll kind of go into more detail about how that build works with mindbender but for now that's night fair okay guys that is all of the covenant abilities that we currently have available to us um, I'm expecting some changes at some point to these guys so I'll make a new video if things change significantly but that's what we have for now um, and look for another video coming in a couple days or maybe even tomorrow about the actual conduits that we get from each one of these covenants. Remember that a covenant is not simply just these two abilities that you choose. You also get access to three soul binds and then all the conduits for each one of those soul binds. So there's a lot of crazy combinations that you can do here. I did want to throw them into this video because it would have been like 50 minutes long. So uh, the next video that comes out is going to be kind of a deep dive of each soul bind for each covenant and kind of the benefits and positives of each. There's kind of a clear choice with each covenant of like which soulbind you'd like for DPS or utility or defensive. So we'll go over all of those in a future video. But let me know in the comments below what you think about these, what you guys are leaning towards using. Personally, I'm kind of thinking it's either going to be Night Fae, but if that gets nerfed or whatever, probably going Venthyr, but we'll see. I would love to be able to swap between these two, but right now we can't. Um, I'd also love to use Necrolord and Mythic Plus. So honestly, who knows what's going to be, uh, you know, on, on launch. But for now, I'm, uh, I have no idea what's going to happen. So we'll see. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.